Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. A Texas couple is convicted of stealing more than a half a million dollars from a person in Sioux Falls. According to the charges, the victim was either an elderly person or someone with a disability. Richard and Susan Spry's thefts ranged from $100,000 to $500,000, which included money from bank accounts along with vehicles. When they're sentenced in July, they both could face more than two decades in prison. Breaking news this midday, Brookings police are on the scene of a deadly crash involving a bicycle and a bus. Authorities are asking people to avoid the area of Main Avenue between 3rd and 5th Streets. No other details have been released. We have a news crew on the way and we'll have an update later today on Kelloland News. The conflicts in the Middle East could be on the verge of a major escalation. U.S. officials believe Iran is preparing a retaliatory attack against Israel, possibly within hours. Natalie Brand has the latest from Washington, D.C. As Israel braces for a possible attack from Iran, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited an Air Force base Thursday warning whoever harms us, we will harm them. A U.S. official tells CBS News it expects a major attack that could include more than 100 drones, dozens of cruise missiles and possibly ballistic missiles aimed at military targets in Israel. Iran vowed retaliation after a deadly airstrike on its embassy in Syria earlier this month that it blames on Israel. We're really trying to avoid war. On CBS Mornings, General C.Q. Brown Jr., the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said the U.S. is in close contact with Israeli generals. So I talk to my counterpart on a regular basis to help us better see um, where the threat is, how we should respond, uh, all to make sure that we uh, avoid a, a conflict. Experts on the region worry about a widening conflict. Things can quickly escalate, uh, tit for tat, uh, uh, missions targeting, um, and all of a sudden you might have a full-fledged conflict. George Washington professor Sina Azodi says different political factions in Iran are at odds over a response. I think these two factions are pushing in different directions. I think the government of Iran wants to find uh, an honorable way out of this. The U.S. says steps have been taken to protect U.S. forces in the region. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. With an attack on Israel possibly imminent, the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem is reminding U.S. citizens in Israel to be cautious, and it has restricted travel for embassy personnel. Well, turning now to a first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Megan Chada. Megan, I'm looking forward to the 70s and 80s this weekend. I am too. It comes with some sunshine. We do have some stronger winds picking up tomorrow. But for today, we just have that sunshine and hardly any wind here in Sioux Falls at 57 degrees. So near normal right now, we are going to continue warming up as we go through the day. And like I mentioned, hardly any wind. As we head across the state, we do have some sunshine in Rapid City at 59 degrees. They do have a stronger south wind right now at about 16 miles an hour. It's 55 in Yankton, 53 in Brookings, 58 in Mobridge. 61 in Phillip and 56 degrees in Custer. There is a look at that wind picking up in central and western South Dakota. Right now at 10 to 20 miles an hour. That could pick up throughout the rest of this afternoon, but die down tonight. On satellite, hardly anything is popping up. There in eastern Kelowland, we do have a few clouds blooming between Sisseton, Millbank, down towards Watertown. Nothing is going to come out of those clouds and they will just clear out as we head overnight tonight. For today, the stronger winds in central and western South Dakota, otherwise sunshine, 65 Sioux Falls, 64 in Aberdeen, 70 in Pier, and 75 in Rapid City. Then for tonight, we'll keep our skies mostly clear. The winds die down. Those temperatures are going to be on the mild side. 43 are low in Sioux Falls, 41 in Aberdeen, 43 in Pier, and 50 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, another mostly sunny day. We'll have some stronger winds in southeastern Kelloland, but that is going to help bring in that warm air. 81 in Sioux Falls, 77 Aberdeen, 81 in Pier, and 80 in Rapid City. Sunday is going to be warm as well with mostly light winds, some sunshine. Things start changing though as we head into Monday afternoon and evening. Rain, even some thunderstorms will start moving in and temperatures are going to fall below normal by the end of next week. We'll take a closer look at all of that in just a little bit.
All right, thank you, Megan. A Sioux Falls trucking company is receiving national recognition for its workplace experience. Carrier's Edge, a provider of online driver training for the trucking industry, has named K&J Trucking as the best fleet to drive for its, in, for its small carrier category. This is the third time K&J Trucking has been named to the top 20 best fleets and the first time it's received a best overall fleet award. Winners are selected based on safety measures, HR policies, and driver-focused initiatives. K&J Trucking has been a family-owned business for 45 years and employs 120 drivers. Waiting on a load of laundry isn't fun for any member of the family, but it's now an opportunity for kids to learn. Laundromat Library is a new outreach program from Siouxland Libraries in Sioux Falls, where slightly worn children's books are making their way from the downtown branch to the laundromat company on North Weber Avenue. Laundromat was a location that kids are often sitting and waiting for multiple hours. Um, so hoping that's kind of an entryway of allowing them to read some books. The library plans to check on the collection weekly and potentially add books. They also hope to expand to other laundromats throughout Sioux Falls. Well, 18-year-old Miles Krosky has competed in badminton tournaments around the world since he was 10 years old. He began sports after attending the Little People of America and the Dwarf Athletic Association of America Conference when he was just four years old. He later began competing in an array of sports. It happened to be the World Dwarf Games, so and the first year that I could play all the sports, so I signed up for all of them. And I fell in love with badminton, so I played them. Um, once a year until about 2015, 2016. And I asked my dad if I could start training since we found out they were going to be in the Paralympics. And that hard work is paying off. What he'll be focused on this summer in tonight's Ion Kelloland at 10.